Hello, and welcome to Conversations in the Void. I'm your host, Joshua Von Ammon. Joining me today is Kate Firth. Kate received her bachelor's degree from the University of North Texas, and she is currently taking up representation with the Wasp Gallery. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining me today, Kate. Thanks for having me, Josh. So I guess we'll just kind of kick this off with uh, talking about recent events. Um, it's exciting with Wasp Gallery. Yeah, I'm very excited. It's uh, a lot ahead in the future, so I'm very and excited about that. And you just had a group show with them, and uh, just previous to that, um, had a solo show at the Continental Lofts mm -hmm. titled Tension. Right. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll talk about that uh, to start just a little bit. Um, you know, so this this show, you were incorporating um, what you've been using for a little bit now, um, you know, with steel sculpture and incorporating fiber work into that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can talk about that just a little bit. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, steel is just something that I've been gravitating towards for like seven years now. Um, I would say it's my primary medium. It's what I feel most comfortable using and what I've practiced the most. Mm -hmm. And uh, using the medium, it's just, I've noticed these patterns over time of what, how steel is perceived, um, who typically buys it, uh, the, the connotations and generals, gender roles that are behind that. And uh, it's definitely more of a masculine one. And so being a young female that's been using this very masculine material for so long, I, I wanted to kind of bring that to attention uh, about this preconceived gender because it's not something that gets brought to attention that mm -hmm. often. And so working on the polar opposite of that, I wanted to bring in fiber, which has been hit on as I feel like, you know, I've had conver several conversations about how fiber is typically considered um, a very female or feminine type of material. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just its history. Kind of a history of Yeah, it's got so much. Yeah, history yeah. of domestics. That's a very good way to put that. Oh, and so, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but, uh, so I wanted to take these two polar opposite gender roles and materials uh, and, and just see how they interacted with one another. See um, how the steel re re reacted to, to the fiber and the rope. Mm -hmm. and and vice versa mm -hmm. so um some pieces look like the rope is pulling in the steel and in other pieces it looks like the the steel is kind of pulling apart and uh fighting with the mm -hmm. rope so mm -hmm. that's what i was really focusing on yeah and i think i think it's really interesting how you really just sort of change the physics of the scenario you know i mean like you know you're right. definitely creating the circumstance where you know i mean the, the like material is uncomfortable. I just like this kind of uncomfortable. Like you don't know what's um, really going to win in, uh -huh. in, with the materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, what is uh, your history with, I mean, moving back a little bit as far as the material, uh, when did you really find your way into using uh, rebar? Because, I mean, that seems to be predominantly what you're using otherwise or today. Yeah, right now, I, I think my, my work has moved from using sheet steel to, to rebar. Uh, I for several years I was using sheet steel and I really enjoyed using that, but I wanted to kind of get away from these dense objects because most of my work is wall hung, mm -hmm. so and in in a more inside domestic space, mm -hmm. so like medium size, it's not not really large, not really small, mm -hmm. um, kind of average like four feet in in both dimensions, uh, with a few inches out of the wall. Yeah. So doing these dense looking sheet steel pieces, uh, I just wanted to focus more on the negative space as opposed to the positive space. Yeah. And then in doing so, I made a few pieces for a show at Blow Up Gallery this past October and really liked the way they came out. They looked a little bit more flowy and just airy and light in a sense instead, mm -hmm. of, instead of looking super he heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that had people reacting a lot differently to the work mm -hmm. and in addition to that with with the rebar and um, with you know any light that would be in the space whether it's a gallery or, or home or whatever it would cascade these huge shadows on the wall so I started to play around with um, how far the rebar would come out of the wall and whatnot because it would because really that becomes a create, part of the work it yeah. does yeah, yeah. So, and I was realizing that as well so uh, I mean, you almost start getting these, like two pieces in one, in a sense. But I was very, yeah. very um, perceptive of that. And I know that you spend a lot of time focusing on like the the structural integrity and how to uh, like properly mount these objects. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, it's a big part of the work. Yeah. So I mean, like rather than just like 
putting some big metal clamps into the fucking wall yeah. and like there we go it's there right yeah yeah uh, and especially because like, the the work with my more recent work with it being rebar there's so much exposed that you have to be incredibly careful of how you're hanging mm-hmm. these objects uh, because nobody wants to see like a big mounting bracket on the wall that's mm-hmm. just really ugly you know mm-hmm. and not only is it ugly it takes away from the piece well yeah well i mean i'd say it like you know i mean that is maybe a 200 pound object you know and so you put those big bars on it, it it feels the way it looks but you play with that more you know going back to this sort of changing the physics of the scenario by um masking like the way sort of it's braced into this space mm-hmm. so that you know it becomes like, like a, a sort of extension. unnatural object mm-hmm. you know i mean like you know something can't just simply just like like that mm-hmm. weighs 200 pounds right yeah i like i like when the viewer is continuously questioning like how how is this on there like um what are these shadows from what is this material a lot of people are because i spray paint the majority of my pieces mm-hmm. um, i i you know whether it's kind of bright colors or cool colors and i play around uh, around a lot with the paint jobs because that is just as important as it is of the the sculpture itself mm-hmm. i'm very aware and conscious of what direction because that that changes somebody's perspective just as much as the form does yeah so um so yeah i mean i mean back to the hanging though um i mean that's that's usually almost step one in the whole process of design yeah Mm -hmm. well it's also really nice i mean you know that you're dealing in this material and you know these traditionally you know, you go to public sculptures, you go to these massive objects outside, but, you know, you're putting them into, you know, I mean, they're, they're domesticatable, you know, I mean, they can be put into a home, they can, Mm -hmm. you know, they don't, they don't, they have an intimacy to them, they have like a, you know, I mean, I think you're kind of pushing the envelope of like what the, the rebar sculpture can be. Yeah, and just my work in general, I really want to bring the perception of what steel sculpture is, Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I've decided that that is what I like to do the most. It's the Mm -hmm. the medium that I can interact with, the, just, that's what, you know, tickles my fancy, in a sense. (laughs) Like, I love how difficult it is to work in it, and how much knowledge, and science, and math, and not only that, but design, and I love all of what goes into making these forms, mm-hmm. but I want to take that, you know, out of just the perception of these huge pieces that are only outside. And so you can only enjoy a steel sculpture if you go to North Park Mall, mm-hmm. if you go to the DMA, mm-hmm. uh, if you go to the Windspear, you know, uh, if you go to the Deep Ellum, uh, the Deep Ellum yeah. train stop, you know, like uh, or Nasher, they might be or, offended. If you know, mentioned. the Nasher's got a couple, <laughs> but yeah, you know, like I'm just talking public space, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I got just you. out in the open. I got you. Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, so I want people's minds to turn that you can. It doesn't have to be a painting on the wall. It doesn't have to be like a small installation or or what whatever you might put yeah. inside your intimate space. But you can have a steel sculpture and it's not this huge cumbersome thing. It mm-hmm. may look like that, but that's my job. And that's how uh, I want to educate you on mm-hmm. um, just in being able to enjoy that in your intimate space. So. Mm-hmm. But then on the yeah. absolute other side where you're mm-hmm. you know, sort of playing for both sides here. Right. I well, am to talk about public sculpture, which right. you also have a vested interest in. I have. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like I've been working so much in an intimate space for for several years now and i really wanted to explore that and i've that is something that i will always explore until you know until i'm done Mm -hmm. but i've i feel comfortable and and knowing what i can do inside that i want to start challenging myself to do large pieces Mm -hmm. not that i'm never going to do a small piece again but it's just something that I'm wanting to explore. Yeah. Uh, Because why not be an artist and do both? Well, do both. Yeah, do both. Why not? Why not do it all? Do it all. Right. That'd be great. So it'd be great to to learn how to work with architects more, (laughs) you know, work with architects and um, just have all of that responsibility and just have a big, big piece out there Mm -hmm. that everybody can enjoy, that everybody can enjoy in the public. And I understand you're on, you're on the short list for such an opportunity i am i'm uh, super excited it's for a, a piece downtown um it's 10 feet tall by 50 feet wide it's it's a wall piece so i was shortlisted with two other artists and so uh, that's have, really exciting it's super exciting i've got my pitch to their board um in early june so fingers crossed it's exciting well. awesome yeah. awesome yeah, super excited well um 
you know, the best of luck with that. We're running out of time. Thank you. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks so And, uh, you know, I really hope we get to have a Kate Firth in downtown Dallas. I, I hope so, dope. too. <laughs> It'd be pretty rad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, until next time, you know, hopefully we'll see you again mm -hmm. on the show sometime soon. And, uh, you know, best of luck. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you every week from here on out. Peace. You see, I believe our souls have memories of sounds. From the beginning, the creation of the universe, like with every melodic sentence and paragraph, our collective memories immersed, our souls are laced with the sounds that our ancestors heard, like the organic drumming of a heartbeat. Will always subconsciously be what we prefer. <laughs> Melodies that take us back to the movements of our foremothers and rhythms that unite our hearts and bring our souls closer to our brothers and pitches that resemble the great balance like a ghostly memory of self and tempos that echo the heartbreaks that our grandparents felt. So when your soul is awakened and recognizes sound, take it as a reminder from the divine that you are bound and don't take it lightly that your body is a vessel sacred by every means and far more complex than the mental because it carries the stardust of creation. It is proof of life through the process of menstruation. It bleeds secrets that challenge the forces of alienation. You see, I believe that music is the spirit of the body, the light that reveals the godly, the majestic reminder that we embody the eternal power of life.